It's been a while. Uh, today, we're going to talk about my current mono rig or favorite mono rigs for fishing nips and streamers. Like anything else, people are always evolving. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get better and more efficient with the tools I use. So what I do and what I say three, four years ago is going to be probably a lot different than what I'm doing currently. And today, um, I'm just going to give you kind of a rundown on what I'm currently using as a mono system for NIMS and streamers. I want to start off by saying I don't carry multiple rods. I, before, I would carry two, three rods with me. And as useful as that is to have a rod set up for a specific situation, it's not as practical because you're carrying three rods. And then most of the time in my situation, I would find myself driving home that evening and realizing that I had left one, if not two of those rods on the bank. So I just carry one rod. The rods I'm fishing now are typically 10 foot, 11 foot rated for a three weight. And I can pretty much do almost anything, uh, streamer, nymph, and dry fly uh, on the smaller size with a three weight rod. And I have a Hydros Euro reel. So basically I'm using a, a full fledge or a full cage reel. And I do this because I'm fishing a lot of mono rigs these days. I just want a reel. So when you are fishing that very ultralight, very thin monofilament isn't going to slip through the cracks as it does with most traditional reels. Saves a lot of frustration. I have a three weight double taper fly line on here. I don't use it at all when I'm jigging streamers with a mono rig. I don't use it at all when I'm Euro nymphing. But in the event I need to, I start seeing fish rise or if I want to use an indicator rig or like a dry dropper where I actually need the mass of the fly line to help present the target or present the rig to the target, I'm going to basically take my mono rig off, wrap it around a, an old spool of tippet or like an Orvis dropper rig cartridge wrap it around, pull the fly line out to the guides, and then attach a regular tapered leader to that. But that is pretty much it. Uh, and I also keep the loop. I keep the loops on all my floating fly lines these days. Seven, eight, nine years ago and, and previous to that, loop technology really sucked. Like the loops would fall off within, within a couple weeks, sometimes even in a couple days. Uh, but the technology and the way that they are welding loops on fly lines these days, it's great. A a loop allows for an easy connection from leader to your line. And if you don't have a loop, and if you cut the loop off, it's going to do two things. That every time you attach a new section of leader, you're going to start cutting back on the actual taper of the fly line. And after multiple changes, the actual taper of your fly line is no longer useful. Uh, it creates like a hinge and it just doesn't cast very well. So keeping the loop on your fly line is going to increase the longevity of your fly line. And then more importantly, when you are fishing dry flies, and especially when you're indicator fishing, one of the biggest adversaries to indicator mending or any sort of on the water mending is a fly line tip that sinks. And anytime you take the, the larger surface area or the larger surface area of a fly line loop and you cut that off, you're actually decreasing the buoyancy of the fly line. And this is when you're gonna start having fly line tips start to sink. Even if you grease them up with a payout pace or like a high floating pace, those tips are going to sink because you, you're trying to keep something that is ultra thin afloat in the surface. But keeping that loop on the fly line is going to increase your flotation. And then it's also just gonna make changing lines and leaders so much easier and just add life to your fly line and especially the first rig that we're going to talk about is a streamer rig. And off my streamer rig, attaching directly to my three-weight double taper fly line, I'm going to add about 35 to 40 feet of six-pound test Maxima. I love Maxima. It's stiff. It's got very little stretch, fairly sensitive, but it just it handles the shock of, a, of an aggressive fish when they strike. The other thing I like about Maxima is with streamer fishing, as I mentioned before, I'm doing most of my streamer fishing now, like with the jigs in particular, on a longer, lighter Euro rod. So you're talking about a rod that has a lot of flex, a lot of give. 
the last thing I want when I'm jig fishing, and when you're talking about jig fishing, streamer fishing, you're using larger hooks. And even on the highest quality competition hooks that you can buy these days, anytime you increase the size of the hook, you're increasing the thickness of the wire or the hook point. And the thicker the wire, the thicker the hook point, the more force you're going to need to penetrate that fish's mouth. And when I'm using larger hooks with a thicker hook point, the last thing I want with the softer rod tip is a monofilament that also has a lot of stretch. So if I have a rod tip that flexes along with monofilament that stretches, I'm losing a lot of the force during the hook set. So because of that, to kind of counter the softer action of the rod tip, I want a monofilament as my base that has very little stretch and Maxima does that for me. It's not easy to see, but it's just, it's great. And I love it and you can get spools of it uh, pretty cheap. So I have about six to eight pound test. Normally I'm using six pound test. And off of that, I'm often using a short section of tippet. So I have my 35 to 40 feet of six pound test. And then off of that, I'm gonna have usually a section of four X tippet. And this is like 6.75 pound test. Um, so just be wary of that, but you're going to have your tippet and I'm going to run about three to five feet of 4X tippet right off the six pound test maximum. Never had any issues with the maxima breaking. Usually if anything breaks, it's going to be the tippet. Uh, maxima, even though they say it's like six pound test, they usually pretty much, they over deliver on a lot of that cases. So this stuff is often like, I feel like this is a lot stronger than six pound test, maybe closer to seven or eight pound test. It's just amazing stuff. And then I've got my SA fluorocarbon tippet, three to five feet to my streamer. The reason why I'm using very thin monofilament, it's, it's, it's all about physics. I'm using thinner lines and there's that common saying that thin for the wind. But when I'm casting streamers or any sort of weighted fly, when I have a mass, when I put that into motion, what I'm looking for is the, the fly itself. And this is kind of like spin fishing. This is like spin fishing when you talk about the, the physics of the casting, is that the fly itself is what's going to help propel itself and it's gonna pull the thin line behind it. And this is why I'm not using 12 and 15 pound test maxima with any of my stuff these days is because the thicker the mono, the more difficult, and I'm gonna stress that, the more difficult it is to cast the rig. When you have a, a weighted fly with a, like a 4.5, millimeter tungsten bead and I toss this in the motion with a little flick of the wrist, it's going to be a little pull and shoot 20, 30, even up to 40 feet of this six pound test with minimal amount of effort. But if I try to do that with a thicker 12 or 15 pound test, it's going to be a lot more challenging. Uh, and people will say, well, I'm using this 12 pound test, 15 pound test maxima because uh, I want to do a little bit of everything. And that's fine. If you want to do, if you want a leader system or a mono system that can you know, cast and chuck, you know, nymphs and streamers and even like some small dry flies and even like some light indicator rigs, that is going to be, that's going to be fine. But when I'm fishing these days is I'm working specifically with a specific technique. So if I'm fishing streamers or nymphs, I'm going ultra thin. And the thinner you go, the easier the casting is going to be, especially when you're working streamers and nymphs. And a lot of times people will say, well, I'm having difficulties casting this rig and many times their their mono system is too heavy for the weight of fly or in this case the streamer that they're using it often has very little to do with their casting technique it's just that they are using too thick of a line and they're asking that fly to pull too much mass with it to the target so you will find that the thinner the mono easier and i stress significantly how much easier your cast is going to be there's going to be some trade-offs because after you cast often you're going to be stripping so thin, thinner monofilament is going to be a little bit more challenging to manage with your hands especially during colder weather but once you develop that dexterity and you have a good sense of control with that thinner monofilament you will absolutely love it so that's the streamer system 35 to 40 feet of that and then about three to five feet of 4x tippet and when people say you can't land big fish on these rigs i'm going to show you some video footage in the last two weeks i've accidentally caught a 27 inch muskie and landed it uh, a couple large pickerel 
I've landed a 15 pound catfish and several smallmouth bass all in the 19 to 21 inch range. All on this 4X and six pound test mono system. So with my three weight rod. So you can land bigger fish. It wouldn't be my first option if I'm going after incredibly large fish, but you can definitely do that if you have a, an idea on how to play fish. We'll talk about the cider in just a moment, but let's discuss a little bit about the mono system that I use for nymphing. Mono rigs for nymphing. It's pretty much the exact same thing. And the thing I, I like about this system now is when I, when I wrote my first book on nymphing, I had a bunch of leader formulas. I brought in a bunch of friends' leader formulas. I provided maybe on upwards of like 20 leader formulas, which at the time I thought was helping people. And, and maybe it did, but I also got a sense that it may have overwhelmed and complicated something that probably should not have been as complicated. So any more these days, my leader systems, whether I'm fishing streamers or nymphs, are pretty simple. They are seamless. I don't want any knots anywhere other than where my main mono system, whether it's Maxima or this Pierre Sempan when I talk about, connects with my tippet. Other than that, like I don't want any knots to hang up in the guides. The other thing is I don't want any sort of taper. Uh, we are relying on the mass of the fly, whether it's a streamer or a little nymph, to propel itself to the target. And anytime you have a taper going from thicker to thinner, you're going to create an unequal or uneven amount of mass within that. And it's going to make casting actually a lot more challenging. And people say, well, you know, it's, you know, I need that taper. I need that mass to turn things over. With these Euro rods and these weighted flies, what you'll find actually is that the thinner and the more level you go with your systems, the easier your casting is going to be. The only time I would even recommend using like a 12 or 15 pound test butt material or section in my mono rig is if I really anticipate having to cast a dry fly or an indicator rig. Anytime you add thick mass like that into a rig when you're casting smaller flies, casting is going to be very difficult because you're casting a, a thick fly line in a fairly lightweight fly. What I want is a lightweight fly that I can put into motion and it's going to carry the thin line to the target. It's just simple physics. So the thinner you go, the easier this casting is going to be. Trust me on that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have 35 to 40 feet of maxima when I'm fishing streamers to a three to five foot section of 4X to my streamer. When I'm fishing nymphs, I'm getting, I'm using Pierre Sempe, uh, maybe butchering that name. Uh, this is a yellow, and then they're also, I like th this in a green color, but I get this from Devin Olson, uh, Tactical Fly Fisher. I'm not sponsored by Devin. Uh, he's a former teammate. I consider him a friend. He supports his entire family and himself through his fly shop, the Tactical Fly Fisher. His shipping and his service is top notch. And I'm very happy and, and proud to be able to support him in this tiny little manner. So if you want to purchase this Pierre Sempe material, I would highly recommend going to his website under leaders and tip it and buying this. This is really some of my favorite stuff. This is two different diameters. I use a 0 0.014 for some thicker, heavier work, maybe fishing medium-sized nymphs on bigger water for bigger fish. And then I also use a 0 0.016 millimeter when I'm fishing really ultralight flies on like six and seven X tippet. Uh, but same thing, I have about 35 to 40 feet. I'll attach directly to the loop of my fly line, reel a bunch of that in the line or within the reel, and then have this going outside the rod tip uh, to my tippet. So about 35 to 40 feet of the Pierre Sempe. And then somewhere between between three and five feet, sometimes a little bit more of usually like 6X, sometimes 5X, but usually 6 to 7X tippet to a small lighter white fly. Within the last six, seven months, I've gone really ultra light, like with my flies. I mean, there's definitely a time and place where you want to fish like the big mobs, the big stone flies and bigger patterns. But I'm finding more and more that the smaller and more micro I go with my flies, the greater my catch rate not just with small fish, but also a lot of our larger fish I'm finding out and, pro and probably have known for quite some time as I've known this to be true in a lot of your tail waters out west and throughout the, in the United States is that a lot of these bigger fish, they'll just snack all day long on smaller 
minuscule little food items. And when you're fishing smaller flies, I want a leader material that is thin and it makes casting easier. You know, when I'm trying to cast a size 20 nymph with like a, a 1.5 or like a 2.0 millimeter bead, if I try doing that with like a 12 pound test, 15 pound test maximum, it's gonna be very, very difficult to make that cast work. But if I put on 0 0.016 millimeter as my main system to a short section of 6X tippet, the casting is going to be a lot easier. And I've mentioned this before, but people will come to me during clinics. And sometimes we do have to work on some casting principles. But a lot of times, the biggest reasons why their casting is not as good as they want it to be is because they are just fishing too thick of a monofilament system or a mono rig based on the lighter white flies that they're fishing. Also, I don't want a leader formula that can throw dry flies and, and a variety of things. When I'm nymphing, Nowadays, I don't, I'm not trying to use an all-purpose leader. I'm using a leader that is designed specifically for Euronymphing. And the thinner you go, this is ultra thin, uh, right to my 6X. The point here I also want to make is that when you, when you go thin, you are increasing the sensitivity. The thinner monofilaments basically have let, less insulation. It's like if you were to go out in the, in the wintertime, like completely nude and start running around, you're gonna get cold, you're gonna get chills uh, in every little crevice and crack that you have. You're gonna feel everything. And the same thing is true with monofilament. Anytime you start adding layers or thickness to your monofilament, you're, you're adding insulation and you're losing that sensitivity. But the thinner you go, basically the more naked you go, the more sensitive the strikes are. To the point now, when you're fishing this stuff, how light and sensitive this stuff is, you know, when you're fishing like sometimes 12, 15 pound test maxima or your, you know, your other monofilaments as your base, when that line stops, when a fish hits, sometimes the line doesn't make a distinct movement, it just stops. And with that type of monofilament, like sometimes even the, what you know, the well-experienced anglers that have a really good nymphing eye, they're going to look at that and say, ah, man, is that a bottom or is that a fish? And often they're going to strike anyway. But there's a moment of doubt. There's like hesitation. But when you're fishing this ultralight thin stuff, when a fish strikes, you're going to see it. Like You're going to see it flex. You're going to see it stretch. There is absolutely no guessing. Uh, in this last year, when I did uh, a large number of my lessons throughout the summer, one of the things I found out about this monofilament compared to like the heavier mono rigs that I w was working is when when anglers were making their casts and their like when the line stopped like it was instinctive like they knew exactly when that line stopped like it was a fish and when it hit bottom and like a rock it would just kind of just slowly stop and they'd be slowly sink down towards stream bottom and they would realize that was a fish. So the cool thing about this monofilament is that the thinner you go with this system, like it pretty much eliminates a lot of the guesswork. Uh, there's no second guessing. It gives you a very distinct uh, advantage when it comes to setting the hook and knowing when a fish has taken your fly. So last but not least is I haven't mentioned the ciders. And one of the, the cool products that have been out for a while, uh, but now... Scientific Anglers has just teamed up with uh, an art company, but essentially we have these crayon markers, kind of these, I don't know what the base of the material is, but essentially this is a marker. This is not wax. Wax ciders absolutely suck. They would run all of your fingers and, and they worked and, and they were functional, but they would create such a mess and they were just horrible to work with, especially in, in extreme cold and in extreme warm temperatures. Uh, but now we have these markers uh, and Scientific Anglers has teamed up with an existing company where they just pretty much took uh, an existing marker, found four of the more probably fly fisher or cider friendly colors that would be pink, black, yellow and orange and put that into a package. And what's really cool about this stuff is that when you have your 35 to 40 foot section of mono base, and then you run another three to five foot section of your tippet, what you can simply do is you can look at the water depth and just gauge about how you how deep it is. And if you're fishing three foot of water and you're fishing vertical, you're going to go up your tippet and say, okay, I'm going to put my tippet, I'm going to take my marker, and I'm going to mark it right here. Just give this a few seconds to dry, but this stuff is just incredible. Like you can add this directly to your 6X tippet. The thinner your cider, the more sensitive it's going to be, uh, and it's going to give you a lot better strike detection. And for something that is like 6X, 
This stuff, once you put this paste on or this little marker, this doesn't add bulk, but it is opaque and you can see it incredibly well. And you can mark this up with some orange, yellow, whatever color, and even black and glare conditions. And what's neat about this is that if you're fishing shallower water and you're moving into deeper water, all you need to do is take like an alcohol pad and just take this and just wipe it over this marker, it's gonna come off. And then you can take another marker and then just re basically reapply your marker to where you want your new cider to be. So what is really cool about this is before in the past where you were kind of having to sometimes adjust your tippet length, if you were going from one extreme to the other, you can pretty much just keep one long tippet length. You know, sometimes if you, if you, even if you want to go up to seven to eight feet, you can do that. And all you need to do is just take your marker and then simply adjust and readjust your cider marker on that very thin tippet based on the speed and depth of the water that you're fishing, which is really cool. And that's one of the things I love about this system now is where before where I would have different leader formulas for this river or the, and that pretty much this is my constant, like my 35 to 40 feet along with my three to five feet of tippet. That is always the same. That, that, that never changes if I'm fishing out west in the east, small rivers, big rivers. The only thing that's often changing now is just where I place the marker on my my tippet. So these are the new indicator markers that SA has uh, available at most of your local fly shops. And you can eat also, if you want to, you can just buy these markers directly from the source. I forget, I used to get them from a source uh, somewhere in Houston, but now you can buy them from a fly shop and for really good colors. And these things are gonna last. I've been using these now for well over a year. I haven't used a traditional cider, mono cider, uh, for well over a year now. These are fantastic uh, and it's just made life so much easier. So I also have to plug my book at the end here. This is the Fly Fishing Evolution. This will be out in November. I have a bunch of copies now and we'll be selling copies on my website. But this is a culmination of the last three years of my life uh, fishing. And I will say this, like in the last three years, I have fished a lot. I've done a lot of guiding, a lot of teaching, education, but also I have spent a lot of time just fishing myself, trying to rediscover some of my weaknesses and, and some of my few strengths, and then just trying to make myself a more efficient angler. In the past, I've talked about like dozens and dozens and dozens of patterns, different leader formulas. This book is different. This is pretty much a small toolbox kit that I use. I can pretty much carry in a small pack. So I have pretty much all my flies, all my leaders, everything I need for fishing dry flies, nymphs, and streamers. So a lot of the things I talk about in the past still apply, but I've really tried to have condensed and consolidate a lot of things and just talk about some of the, the newer, more modern riggings uh, and rigs that I like to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I really hope um, you consider buying that book. You can buy it on Amazon, local fly shop, or even on my website at livingonthefly.com. And that is it. Again, thank you for your support and take care. See ya.